Hello, welcome back to the Level 1 News. Today's September 24th, and today we're doing security and nonsense. Woo! A weird combination that we don't usually get. Well, that's it's like the most it, boring section with the most exciting section. Uh, security's getting more and more exciting because there's a lot more horrible things happening. And if you are someone who does a lot of uh, developing online, you might be enjoying these new automation tools that all of the, uh, the code websites are rolling out. Oh, look at all this cool stuff we can do. You don't even have to think about it. Well, you might want to think about it. Travis CI flaw exposed the secrets of thousands of open source projects. Developers are furious at Travis CI's insanely embarrassing security bulletin. Oh, it's bad. It's real bad. So basically what happened is unintentionally a lot of your uh, cryptographic stuff could get leaked through these despite you not setting it up that way. Yeah, you don't store cryptographic stuff in the Git repository for security reasons. You can use tokens and environment variables and the, inv the you know the, the platform will keep it secure. The platform did not keep it secure. Would you say they deviously licked it? <laughs> well, you didn't have to lick anything. They sent it to you. It's my favorite new term. I'm going to be saying it all the time. In they, in the wrong context as well. They gave it out to everybody who uh, was using the service accidentally. So that's unfortunate. Oops. That really opens a lot of people up. That's going to ruin some weekends. Yes. For sure. And it's such a nice, like, right in the early fall, beautiful weekend. Krista, what's the camping schedule? I want to go sooner than later. I was actually thinking about taking a week off soon. I don't know that I'd camp the whole week, but soon. Why now that the peak fall color is in October. Why don't you be hardcore and just camp while also working? <laughs> so the connection's not good enough in the backcountry for that. Solar powered laptop. Hey, you need to take the the uh, SpaceX. Uh, let's be honest here. We know that she goes to campgrounds that have outlets. Somewhere. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> well, I do take a battery backup sometimes, like a little battery pack, just to charge my phone. Microsoft has, for a long time, been screaming about the death of the password. And it seems like they're finally ready to take that step. Microsoft accounts go passwordless, posted on September 15th by Paul Throck. So you can turn this on on your Microsoft account. And it's not like it's really, truly passwordless. It's just that it's whenever you sign in, it remembers you. And it remembers you cryptographically. So it's not like stealing your, your cookies will let somebody else authenticate as you. But it's basically multi-factor, but the one factor has been removed. Yeah. So you still have to have the authenticator. You can still do the face unlock. You have all these a variety of ways that you can do it. None of them are passwords. Microsoft's general trend is to try to use this kind of stuff for day-to-day -day access, but to make it where you only need your password whenever you're doing you know, critical operations or changing your configuration or enrolling a new device, which actually is probably better from a security standpoint because it makes it a lot uh, harder for an opportunistic keylogger to steal your actual password. Yeah, I don't know. I, every time I need the sudo password, I got to go to SharePoint. <laughs> oh, SharePoint. It is a pain, isn't it? <clears throat> so, um, Apple had a pretty big flaw, and it affected literally everything that they sell. Apple patches the NSO zero-day flaw, affecting all devices. This was the zero-click iMessage thing where somebody could send, send you a malicious iMessage You'd never know, and now someone in somewhere else, some other country, has control of your iPhone because that's just how we roll. And several countries where you see this kind of thing, the you know the the big Pegasus countries, have already they've found them in the wild. Journalists, dissidents, activists, they're infected. Now, big picture, do you think that this group would sell that exploit? Um, universally or do you think they have tiers so like once they've got a set of exploits that gets them into a phone if that's the only one they have they protect it religiously but then they figure out another one and then maybe that moves down the cost here and they figure out another one and then just any rando with a few million dollars can buy it I think it'll be the same business model as those early website theme payment sites remember there's one price if we only sell it to you there's a much lower price if we sell it to you, but then we go ahead and sell it to everybody. So the exploit that has just been patched was probably one of those very low cost. And there's probably at least two other ones that are unknown, but that yeah. they're still using. This was the silver tier. Yeah. You get tech support 
with this plan, but not the full concierge service that the Platinum Tier gets. So that seems obvious to us, the bozos in the, in the peanut gallery. I wonder if anybody at Apple is thinking along the same lines. Like, oh crap, there's probably two other things that are as yet undiscovered. Do, can we do any recon to figure out what those things are? The problem is we've learned that the inside of Apple, it's kind of a situation where they don't like this stuff to be talked about. Well, they, they can, the Apple has the capability to figure out which customers were affected by this. It seems like they could use those same customers to look for other indicators of compromise. Because chances are whoever was interested in the president of France is probably still interested in the president of France. What weird stuff is his phone doing could clue you into what those other things are. It's despotic targeted advertising. <laughs> There's some engineer who's had all those thoughts that you just described, but he was like, you know, it's the weekend. It's a beautiful fall, <laughs> fall weekend. That sounds like a Monday problem. Yeah. It's the weekend, and I work for an evil corporation that doesn't care about me. It can wait. I'm just saying, if Apple really cared about security, they have a lot of tools here to proactively detect and take action against these things. Just saying. If Apple really cared about security, they'd trash their product line. <laughs> well, they would at least hire some people that knew what they were doing as far as, like, bounds checking and, you know, that kind of thing. Well, another big name, although it's, it's always funny to see these old camera companies. And it's like, oh, yeah, they pivoted. They did it. I remember when we covered Kodak. And it was like, yeah. Kodak was hit by ransomware. And they were just like, I don't know what to do. So here's another name. Technology giant Olympus has been hit by the Black Matter ransomware. It's too bad it wasn't Revil because Revil released a, the key to decrypt you if you were affected by it prior to uh, September 15th. This was a multi-continent. Europe, Middle East, and Africa were all hit. That's a hell of an infection. Good luck, Olympus. Oops. <laughs> a preview. So, uh, yeah. Wikipedia. They've got these sort of um, localized Wikipedias, obviously. So, like, China doesn't have one, obviously, because the Chinese can't get to Wikipedia. But the uh, Chinese diaspora, it's diaspora, right? Or is so. it diaspora? I think it's diaspora. diaspora. Especially those in Taiwan, which are already a little bit of a hot button issue, love to use Wikipedia local China. But there's a dark side. <laughs> Wikipedia bans seven Chinese users amid concerns of infiltration and physical harm. Removes sysop privileges for another dozen or ones more about doxing and frets about preserving freedom to edit in the face of hostile regimes. So basically, those people like in Taiwan would make edits to Wikipedia but may expose themselves to other people that would do them harm. And those other people were actively trying to get them to expose themselves. They're trying to use the internal structure of Wikipedia to try and dox other people who were trying to put facts about China and Taiwan on that Wikipedia. And they were fairly successful. What a horrible job. Yeah. South Africa has also suffered a ransomware, and it seems to be uh, pretty crippling. Ransomware encrypts South Africa's entire Department of Justice network. So that's the dockets, the cases, email, everything. Krista, what would a South African IT person who has to deal with this sound like? <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a South African swear. Yeah, but you do the South African accent. That's I, what I'm trying to I get out of I can't do the South African accent. How disappointing. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is that you trying to do the accent? No, not, not to do the accent. It's just like... You know, it's been three days and they're still down. Oh, yeah, yeah. And things happen very slowly in some of those African countries. Yeah. Like, we're used to things happening quickly and they're like, what are you talking about? we got weeks for that to happen. It's <laughs> like, but it's a, it's a blood transfusion. No. <laughs> this one's terrifying. <sighs> oh, boy, is this one terrifying. And I don't see much hope of us avoiding this. Nope. Because the way that they're selling it is to get governments free money. And when you offer governments, especially local governments, free money, they will always take it. New tolling systems are poised to hit highways. Basically, you know, at this point, we can just strap a Raspberry Pi onto some, you know, highway signs with some zip ties. 
put a battery there. It'll run for months and months and months scanning every single license plate. That's the era that we've entered in with $35 and you can scan every single license plate on an interstate in real time. They want more than that. They want a module in your car or in your phone. Now, the reason for this is because the way we pay for the highways is through a gasoline tax. But all of a sudden, there's a lot of cars on the road. I mean, a lot, but a decent amount that don't use gasoline. How do you tax them? Well, they want to do it like a tattler in your car with a per mile charge. Amazing. Yeah. It's a good thing they're so good at protecting data because then all of my location data would be in the government database. <laughs> As if it's not already. Yeah, that's probably true. So uh, you can also choose an annual fee, which would probably be more than you would end up paying unless you drive a lot to not be spied upon, which is another way. It's a convenience tax. <laughs> Cost of freedom is high. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Very high. In this proposal, it's $120 a year. <laughs> the Tree of Liberty must be replenished every few years with lots and lots of greenbacks. And gasoline tax. <laughs> Anonymous continues to do some uh, activist hacking, I suppose. And this time, the far right is its target. Anonymous claims to have stolen a huge trove of data from Epic, the right wing's favorite web host. Uh, it's probably all of its data. Apparently, all of its data has been lost. And not just like the data of the sites, but like the billing data and stuff too. So if you were trying to hide who you were as you hosted a right-wing website, you're going to get exposed. Every time the far right people try to do it, it's like, I'll build my own version of that. They're just so bad at it. It ends quite badly. Remember yes. uh, the My Pillow guys Google <laughs> site? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he hyped that up and got venture capital and everything. It's astonishing. If you get deplatformed, I feel for you, but you really got to vet your replacement web host. It does seem like maybe the problems that they just tried to spring up too fast. Maybe eventually someone will get it right, but. Mm, maybe. I don't know, but you, it's so hard. They have to do it without any help from anybody else, payment processors or anybody. Yeah. So it's, I'm sure it's very difficult. I, here's an amazing story. I don't know what the laws are across the pond there, but is this not entrapment? Uh, I don't think that this applied for that, but could be wrong. I feel like this should be entrapment. <laughs> Every message was copied to the police. The inside story of the most daring surveillance sting in history. This is a follow-up to a story that we had a week or two ago. Uh, it's, it's in Australia, and this was the phones that were like sold as... You know, this is secure. It's in in encrypted. You can only order special order but these phones. They're like two grand each. This is different than the one. The one we talked about previously was like a a device that anybody could buy. This was only sold like under the table. Oh, you had to know somebody to get this. Yeah, it turns out that was just a police operation the entire time. Yeah, the guy you had to know was an undercover cop. Uh, but they sold a lot of them, and they ran the service for a long time. I mean, it was like millions of messages, tens of millions of messages. What a great uh, photo as well, illustration for this article. <laughs> Anom was the name of the, the phone. These phones did not operate as phones. They didn't call. They didn't do text messages. They didn't get on the web. You'd open the calculator and put in like a secret algorithm formula to the calculator, and it would launch the, the dark web messaging <laughs> service. So... These guys probably felt really cool when they were doing this. <laughs> what they're really doing was playing themselves. <laughs> they got, uh, I, it's funny because obviously they waited a long time to play this hand till they got a court case. They felt they, it was worth, it was giant bundles of cocaine hidden under a transport ship. And uh, they were going to Australia. They estimated it would be worth $50 million. Wow. Although they usually estimate crazy high with law enforcement and drugs. Never buy drugs from a cop because they're going to charge you too much. <laughs> Pro criminal tip. Here's a cautionary tale from NBC, or, yeah, NBC News. Uh, I'm not bothered by this because I don't care. But it is a big question. You really, it, to opt out of this, you have to do it all yourself. Yeah. And you still have to pay these stupid taxes, which I hate. 
Hackers are leaking children's data, and there's little that parents can do. NBC News collected and analyzed school files from dark web pages and found that they're littered with personal information of children. So what do you do here? Do you start giving your children like a hash and just refer to them as that? <laughs> Bobby drop tables. <laughs> Maybe Elon Musk wasn't that insane, naming his kid a bunch of random characters. Just pop a QR code onto them. <laughs> Imagine the, the absolute bedlam that would result when the kids figured out they could swap the QR stickers. <laughs> I saw a, a post this weekend on a developer forum. They, uh, uh, it was a big bank. It was a bank that is local, and you've heard of them. In their online portal, you could enter an alias for your uh, different bank accounts so that you could label them. They used an emoji for one of them. Not only did it make their account completely inaccessible, it shut down all of the other accounts in the branch. Like, they couldn't use the computers in the branch to query a list of accounts because... There was an emoji and it was unexpected. Yeah, there was an emoji in the... In the, in the it was like customer name for the account and it was, you know, an emoji and the, the system could not handle that. I hope it was something really childish like... <laughs> Like eggplant or something. <laughs> it was just, and they were like, did you do that on purpose? And they're like, y- y- yeah, I thought it would be funny. And they were like, don't do that. Don't do that again. <laughs> Haven't we seen at least one person legally change their name to an emoji at this point? Oh, maybe. I yeah. think we've seen that. So that would be a really funny way to, to deal with that as a parent. It's like, all right, all right, Billy, legally your name is going to be the eggplant emoji because we don't want your information to leak onto the dark web. I'm going to make your life a misery. <laughs> Everything you do is going to be a joke and a target, and you're going to grow up totally screwed up, but your bank's going to be totally secure. I don't so. know. If you, if you explain that to 12-year-old me, I'd probably be on board. I was like, I'm willing to suffer through that. Because do I get to pick the emoji? The, the, other, the other side of that is darker. No, you don't get to choose it, and it's poop emoji. <laughs> oh. No. We have a new botnet out there, and they are pulling off a DDoS, and of course they're going after the very people that might uncover them. <laughs> Krebs on security hit by a huge new IoT botnet, Maris. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. These are uh, routers, I think, right? Routers that are compromised, and a lot more of them have just come online. Got quite a bit of bandwidth going there. <laughs> All those baby monitors in, uh, you know, just outside of Kiev are really starting to add up. Twenty-one point eight million bogus requests per second. And then you could bounce that off of DNS. <laughs> mm, good times. You mentioned this earlier. We finally have a universal solution to the Revil ransomware. But as you can see, there's so many more to replace it, so it probably doesn't matter. Free Revil ransomware ma- uh, master decryptor release for past victims. If you were affected by Revil before September 14th, 2021, this will be the thing you need. You know, there's some small office out there that got ransomware in early August, and they're like, no, we're going we're gonna to wait. We're going to hold it out. Now they're feeling good. There's going to be a case where like somebody had a bunch of Bitcoin that was ransomware, but they couldn't pay the ransomware because... It, it was, you know, ransomware. And then two years later, they come out with the decryption thing. And they've either lost the data or forgotten about it or something else. And so it'll be like panning for gold. It's like, oh, I found this data set that was encrypted. And then I happened to run this thing on it. And now I've got all this, you know, cryptocurrency. You'll be able to get maybe 20, 30 Bitcoin out of it, which at that point will buy you a liter of clean water. <laughs> what a joy. And the cows, you know, as, as delicious as they are and as much as we love them, they do burp and fart a lot. And that's annoying to the planet. <laughs> so what can we do about that? Researchers toilet train cows in hopes of reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. So uh, they taught them to pee in a, in a trench that would prevent the ammonia from escaping into uh, the soil. And uh, it worked. It worked really well. They potty trained them from birth, and that was uh, very effective. Hey, guys, I got this crazy idea. Are you just raising us to kill us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of, I mean, it's great that they potty trained, but it's also like, doesn't that mean they're more intelligent than we initially thought? <laughs> yeah, they do refer back in that article over and over uh, how intelligent the cows are. The way they did it is, uh, w- like, if they would put you in the room with the pad, and as soon as you pee, you get a treat. And then they put you out in the field, and as soon as you pee, they spray you with a water bottle. <laughs> oh, just like what you do with a dog. It worked. 
But they are having trying to figure out a way to mass train cows like that. Although once you train an entire flock of cows, a herd, cows are herd, right? Don't you get that hundred monkey scenario where the, they'll, they'll just start, start copying? Each other. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and then the babies would learn that from birth as well. Pretty sure this is also the beginning infrastructure of the Matrix, where we just do this by robots. Like the robots just auto train the cows, and then then who's and they training eliminate them? us? Yeah. Uh, do you think there will be a premium on potty trained cows at the livestock auctions? I think it's probably going to be like carbon credits eventually. Like you can, oh, yeah. you have to have so many potty trained cows to get your carbon <laughs> credits. One cow is holding you back, and you're trying to reason with it. <laughs> the farm is going to go under. I think we could sell the rights to that to Disney. Could be like a new uh, Charlotte's Web type thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> children's movie. A young cow that like pees in the hay while it's sleeping, and they got it's like, no. Oh. I'm a young independent cow. I can pee wherever I want. It's like, no, you got to conform. That'd be a children's book. That's a children's oh. book in the making. And he burps and farts constantly. Kids would love that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you got something here. <laughs> Although the ending would be sad. Yes, yeah. the ending would be very sad. But that's the circle of life. He goes to live on another farm happily ever after. Don't, wor- <laughs> right. don't worry where he's going. You know, they made it work in Lion King. We could probably make it work here. Another farm called Outback. <laughs> Ruth's Chris. <laughs> Krista, you are a big fan of Jurassic Park. I am. And this story is interesting because they are literally doing the exact same thing. There's In the book, this doesn't happen in the movie, but in the book... He has the, the proof of concept for his investors is a tiny elephant. No. Oh. And what's funny is that the investors are all blown away. They're like, wow, look at the tiny elephant. But the elephant's like super aggressive. It gets sick all the time. Like it always has a cold. And they hide that from the investors. And then the investors are like, well, let's just do dinosaurs. Oh, man. I can't wait for woolly mammoths just like snot dripping yeah. out of them, just <laughs> running down the interstate, just smashing cars back and forth. It's going to be amazing. Firm raises $15 million to bring back woolly mammoth from extinction. Did we do this story? Uh, we may have done they've this. They've been talking story. about this, but they yeah. have now gotten the, the, the venture actual, capital. Yeah. yeah, they got the $15 mil. So, ah. Oh, Paywalled. They actually show the chart. Literally, substitute dinosaur for woolly mammoth and frog for elephant. That's what they're doing. Yep. It's almost like they watched the movie and we're like, let's lift the artwork here. It's perfect. And they say that these giant animals are really good for ecosystems, but are they? Are we going to get that much out of them? Are we going to eat them eventually? I guess. I think the idea. I don't know about woolly mammoths specifically, but like they've talked about, like reintroducing wolves to Yellowstone caused a chain effect that like <laughs> made everything a lot better. Weirdly enough, like it reduced the deer population, so there was more vegetation, and so more smaller animals moved in. Hmm. So. I don't know. I don't know what woolly mammoths would do. They probably don't either. Really. Do you think they can be potty trained? Absolutely. That's the what's cow important. Can. Yeah. Elephants are smarter than cows, right? Can yeah. we train the cow or can we train the elephants to potty train the cows since the <laughs> elephants are smarter than the cows? Or the woolly mammoth to train the elephant who then trains the cows. What if the woolly mammoth becomes the ultimate like herd animal? Like you can if you get two or three woolly mammoths, you can maintain a herd of a thousand cows. It's going to be tough if they're anywhere near a road. What if we accidentally introduce a thing to the woolly mammoths where they actually take carbon out of the equation? Like somehow they have like a reverse, you know, burping and farting process where they actually capture carbon. They suck up all the fart gases. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think that's going to happen. (laughs) Ah, Disney. Man, I bet right now is the... We're getting to the most magical time to go to Disney, right? Because no one's there. The evenings are brisk. The days are wonderful. The lines are short. I don't know if that's true in Disney, California. Or in uh, Florida. Well, it's going to be better than August, right? Yeah, oh yeah. But it turns out there is a way to have an even more VIP experience at Disney. How do you do that? Well, you've got to know Tony. (laughs) Man with stolen Disney iPad caught giving a tour at Hollywood Studios, deputies say. Deviously what? licked Disney iPad. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the scenario. Some unidentified, uh, unidentified guy is leading a tour group at Disney. And he's got the iPad. So these magic iPads that they use at Disney, you can just move yourself to the front of any line. Just skip everything because you have like the master switch in your hand. That guy was not a Disney employee. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Dave from accounting. So 
they went to the parking lot and they questioned him and he was like yeah tony gave me this and they're like oh tony apparently they've they know tony <laughs> so I, I get the impression that tony is maybe like an organized crime guy <laughs> and he has a deal with people he's like oh dude I, let me let me take you to a full disney experience it won't cost you a dime and he steals an ipad <laughs> <laughs> he sends out one of his underlings to be your tour guide <laughs> It's so great. <laughs> this before, displeases the mouse, but it is great. In before next year, this becomes a sanctioned div- Disney activity. Like if you pay the five thousand dollars and you get the VIP package, they just I, do this on their I think own. They, I think you can do that actually. <laughs> That's why it exists. But yeah. the guy who was working for Tony, he didn't realize that his iPad was stolen, or at least he said he did. <laughs> wow, what a fun day! Going around with the mob and Disney. <laughs> I wonder who the software engineer was on that. So it's like, we're just going to make it to where it's drag and drop. We could just reorder people in line. Yeah. Why would we need that feature? Oh, I bet. That, I bet there was at least one engineer who made it correctly. And they're like, nah, this is too hard to use. Yeah. Do you know who we hire around here? <laughs> Has that been a, a feature for a long time, you think? Probably. Like this, the line skipping? Yeah, well, they didn't have the technology to do it automatically like that. Yeah. But I'm sure they had some kind of wristband or something. I have a friend who loves theme parks, but she hates line cutters. And I feel like if she saw someone do that, she might lose her shit in line. <laughs> and you, you can pay your way to the front anyway, right? There's a special kind yeah, of thing. Fast can, pass. Yeah, Fast I think most theme parks have that. Well, here's a headline that speaks for itself, and it's just like, wow. <laughs> I hate what, this. Where have we come as a, as a society? CNN Business reports that a cigarette group has taken control of an asthma inhaler maker. That's uh, Philip Morris. Philip Morris is uh, getting into lung health game because they see the writing on the wall with the anti-lung health game. They made lots of customers, and now they're buying something new to sell to those customers. They're hoping that they can uh, EpiPen this, where they take you know the ordinary asthma inhaler and turn it into something that you have to pay $1,000, $2,000 a month for. It's already pretty expensive to get inhaler. Would you put 20 of those in a convenient hard pack? <laughs> you can pop in your pocket? Mmm. <laughs> Inhaler reds. Is it, it's 20, right? You get 20 cigarettes in a package? I think so. I think that sounds right. Do you think that uh, cigarettes suffer from shrinkflation? Have they made cigarettes smaller ever? I don't know. That's probably a good question for Chad. Uh. Well, we know how bad it is when the power goes out at chip fabrication plants. You don't just lose that day's work. You can lose a massive amount of work because it takes a long time for this to happen. When you take the power out of it, it destroys everything, which is probably why these people are furious. Stray balloon triggers chip making outage at Infineon plant. So it wasn't just, uh, oh, we should go get that balloon. It was, oh, we've lost the entire month's batch. Wow. A Mylar balloon with helium in it just happened to run out of helium on a substation. And just happened to short two very important pieces of equipment. This definitely wasn't some sort of intelligence operation. You think, how hilarious would it be if uh, it was a balloon with Winnie the Pooh on it? (laughs) (laughs) Greetings from China. (laughs) It's a little too on the nose. (laughs) China sends its regards. (laughs) Welcome to the Hundred Acre Woods. (laughs) (laughs) We got to turn that into a mouse pad. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome to the Hundred Acre Wood. <laughs> uh, and Airbnb, Chris, you did a little bit of Airbnb recently, didn't you? Not recently, but I've I've rented an Airbnb before. Had a good experience with it. Yeah, I've did only you, done it like two or three times. But. Did you rock out to any of your weird musical tastes while you were there? No. Well, I think maybe that was the fear here. Although I think it might also just be discrimination, straight up. Airbnb host denies metal fan lodging due to do disturbing music taste. Okay. Death Blooms. I'm not hip death to Death blooms. blooms. No, I've never heard of that. But uh, they describe them as aggressive, expletive field, and uh, something else, and lock them out. Now, Airbnb says that you can do this. This is allowed under the Airbnb <laughs> Well, it's not a protected class. Like, Metalhead isn't. We just want us right. somewhere to sleep. We weren't, we weren't going to do any kind of blood sacrifice or anything. It's fine. It's not clear... How the, how they figured out this person was into this band, but I guess maybe they told them because they were coming to town to go to a show. Mm. Mm. Death Blooms, to their credit, have taken advantage of this. They're marketing a new shirt. <laughs> and if they sell out, they will pay for this woman's hotel. Nice. Wow. 
That's the quote that the Airbnb person said about death blooms. We should make a t-shirt of all the worst YouTube comments we've ever gotten. <laughs> Don't encourage them. And here's a ominous sounding thing that will happen. Uh, it, it would suck because, you know, this is going to be like a short straw kind of thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, guys, I gave a pint yesterday. I can't go again. Astronaut blood can be used to make concrete on Mars, scientists say. Hmm. This has the same vibe, but some of you may die. Why were we testing for that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're constantly trying to figure out how to build on Mars. Obviously, when you are loading up the spaceship, the paving bricks have to get left behind. This was not in the Matt Damon potato movie. Well, he didn't do a lot of building. <laughs> so they're saying, well, you know what would work great? That Martian soil, if you just have like a binding agent, you could make some really cool stuff. You know what binds great with Martian soil? Human blood. And now, urine. To the, now, the red planet. Yeah, I was going to say, I presume they tested uh, urine and poop and that uh, it didn't uh, work as well. There you go. That's pretty much what it will look like when you're done. Looks like poop, doesn't it? <laughs> He's making a pinch pot. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're a kid and you do your, your uh, clay unit in art school. So, uh, obviously a brick made of urine and blood and sand probably wouldn't be too fun to hang out with and be in the same room with. So what they're talking about doing is you get a protective sealed environment and then you, you mud over it with this mm. and that's radiation shielding and shielding from the harsh Martian winds. Okay. That's and, interesting. Uh, does that make female passengers more valuable on the trip to Mars? Young female passengers? Maybe. <laughs> it's like Janice you got pregnant? Now we can't finish the house. <laughs> well, I think they require you to be on some sort of contraception while you're up there. But maybe maybe they would stop? Well, NASA might require that, but Musk ain't going to. Not on the generation ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've been collecting blood the whole way to Mars. It's just like... It's a giant blood tank. Yeah. <laughs> and then we encounter the aliens and they scan it and they're like, what? That's <laughs> what actually... <are> <laughs> Now I'm curious, would would regular like blood straight from the tap be better or would menstrual blood be better? For Probably straight blood? from the tap because you're looking for a binding agent, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Engagement challenge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look for the clickbait video coming soon. Uh, we're going to have to come up with a good title for this one. Oh, wait. The, that... No, this no, we, I was just, I was in there. Uh, I think for this episode, the news has to be something to do with that, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, we did a story last week, and I was like, is this the same school? Turns out it's not. It's a different one. The other school had more of a cat girl problem, but this one seems to be more uh, dog based furriness. <laughs> uh, Northern Kentucky Middle School wants students to stop barking and wearing collars. Uh, Camp Ernest, Ernest Middle School, I guess, We've got a little bit of a problem. Yeah, they're a little bit disturbed by the fact that uh, a lot of the students seem to have gone furry. These guys chose the uh, canine. Now that I think about it, I wonder, like, it's, it's, this is happening after, like, a year and a half in isolation. Is this, like, middle school students trying to revert back to a simpler time when they were children and they used to pretend to be animals? We want to make you aware of some of the observations we've made this year. <laughs> <laughs> they mentioned TikTok. That does seem to be what's moving all of this. Uh, in, encouraging students to destroy soap dispensers in the bathrooms. Oh, that's the... What's the other one? What's it called? Devious, devious Lick? Devious that's, lick. You're stealing in general is, is Devious Lick. Do you think you're more likely to Devious Lick if you're dressed as a furry? Does that give you confidence? You might be too childlike. Lick could go both ways. Right. Ooh, woo. Mm. <laughs> Gordon Freeman with licking the crowbar. Just... <laughs> while maintaining eye contact yeah yeah <laughs> well we have two stories about criminals with phones this week one of them the law enforcement got the upper hand but the other one the criminals took it back <laughs> the unhackable phones given to prisoners by the scottish government were hacked by drugs this is why you don't let people have phones when you're running prison architect isn't it cruel and unusual punishment to make me use that phone in prison <laughs> So they tried to lock them down, I guess because of uh, the pandemic, you couldn't get visitors, right? Mm -hmm. So they were like, well, we got to give them some kind of 
communication with their people. So this is what they come up with. Uh, the guys at the prison said it took them basically most of an afternoon to figure out how to hack it. And they were sending messages to whoever they want, including drug dealers. Great. That's why you got to have the double fence in prison architect as well. Then you got drones. That's not a feature in the video game. Oh, uninstall. Well, Krista, you love Middle Earth, but you're not really dedicated to it. Not really, no. You really need to step up your game, to be honest. Like this man. Lord of the Rings actors praise Italian man who lives as a hobbit. What a dream. He must be independently wealthy. No, they said he works as uh, they, they gave his profession. Oh, oh wow. paywall. It wasn't, it wasn't anything crazy. But uh, he just lives in oh, a Oh, pastry chef. Yeah. Oh. 37 year old Italian pastry chef. That's uh, that feels very on brand for a hobbit to work <laughs> in a food related industry. And he looks hobbity, don't it? He does, yeah. Well, he's got the costume, he too. How tall do you think he is? They didn't say. I can't tell. Maybe he has, I wonder if he has smaller furniture made for his house. Yeah, because it looks like that thing in the back there is normal size. I don't know. Anyway, he's got four acres and he's raising money to convert it all into a shire. And uh, Elijah Woods and some of the other actors who were hobbits have weighed in and they don't think they give him any money, but they encourage other people to. <laughs> we don't want to do this. We don't want to encourage this, <laughs> but it is kind of cool. Now, there was a time when those guys were kind of trying to like put that behind them, right? They didn't want to be typecast. It seems like they've turned around and just embraced it. Yeah, I, th I think at this point they've all had careers outside of Lord of the Rings, so now they're like, eh, we can talk about it more. They've pulled a Nimoy. Yeah. Which is, you hate it at first, and then at the end of your life, you just completely identify with it and direct one of the movies. The uh, idea of getting your brain frozen, would you consider it? No. Uh, the reason I wouldn't consider it is all these stories we've heard who was the baseball player that did it? The famous one. There's a That's famous story zone. about someone going to the cryogenic center and they needed to do something in a closet, maybe a server closet or something, a refrigerated closet. And they went in and his head was sitting on top of a mass, a, a bulk tuna can. <laughs> like he would get at a restaurant. It's fine. And they're like, well, well wait a minute. That's so-and-so. It was labeled. <laughs> and I was like, wait, but he paid a lot of money for that. You don't know what's going to happen to your parts after they've been frozen. The scorned wife has raided their ex-husband's cryogenics lab, stealing the frozen brains of people who hope to be brought back to life. Okay. Yes. So there's a divorce. They were co-owners of the business. The business split into two different businesses. And now there's an argument about who owns the brains. She didn't like how that was going, so she showed up, grabbed the brains, loaded them up into a van. What could possibly go wrong? Well, he described the liquid nitrogen canisters that were knocked over during the raid were the liquid nitrogen that should have been taken with her to keep the temperature low enough to guarantee the viability of the brains. So probably they got too warm. Probably. But we don't know, because... No one's actually ever it'll, done that? It'll be at least a few hundred years before that would even be remotely possible. And I don't think these brains will make it that long. No. Probably not. I think these will be compost long before then. Probably. Prime compost material. You know what else is prime compost material? No, nah, actually, you shouldn't, no. you shouldn't fertilize your, uh, your lawn with your own waste, <laughs> which is what I would think would come from this. Taco Bell tests 30-day taco subscription to drive more frequent visits. Listen, it didn't work for Movie Pass. Why is it going to work for Taco Bell? What about Panera with their Coffee Pass? The Coffee Pass is a great deal, but the Coffee Pass has the upsell that you buy a lot of other things. Well, so is this. Uh, Who is going to go and get one regular taco at Taco Bell? Maybe Krista. Yeah, see, Krista. I'm kind of an outlier here because I tend to get small meals. But I don't, I don't. The regular taco is just even it's trash. And I bet you can't upgrade it to chicken. Probably not. Or Supreme. Or Chicken Supreme. Do you think you could go soft? No, uh, maybe. Probably, probably you could do soft. That's making me hungry. I don't know. I like Taco Bell, but I, I couldn't be bothered for one taco a day. What bu bugs me most about Taco Bell is it costs exactly the same as like the good Mexican restaurants, and it's just such a better yeah. meal yeah. experience. Yeah, the Mexican restaurant is such a deal that a chain could never compete with it. Yeah. 
But maybe you live in a part of America that doesn't have those Mexican restaurants. I'm always so blown away good. by the Euros who are like, oh, we don't have a lot of Mexican food around where I am. And I'm like, they oh, have uh, Turkish. Mis- oh, yeah. They have no, that instead. That's their Mexican restaurant. Well, to be fair, the we, have the, we have the Greek place down the road. Yeah, but we just got the one. Yeah. So, also, 30 Taco Bell tacos in 30 days. How much salt is that? That's a lot of salt. You're going to die. <laughs> nah, people. Like, when I was in college, I liked <laughs> Taco Bell, and I probably got it, like, once or twice a week, but it's actually staggering sometimes when you talk to people and find out how often they eat fast food. Yeah, some people every day, like uh, Chris Chan, his whole family all day it was fast food. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. I I could see that like ten or fifteen years ago, but fast food is so much more expensive now. Yeah, and it's like it's just not worth it. That so also, you know, I watch a lot of the, the freak shows. The six hundred six hundred pound live people and the two large people, they get it delivered. And they get, and they'll go through their McDonald's order because it's shocking. It's got to be forty dollars worth of stuff, huh. and that's one meal. Wow. I don't know how they pay for it. Well, the, actually, the one girl I do know how she paid for it. She had a fetish site, oh. so they were literally just like, it was a vicious cycle of horror. God, it's a good show. <laughs> uh, devious licking. Was it? Is it devious licking? It's it's devious licks is the word. Devious I think it's licks. funnier to say devious licking as in like a, a verb, but devious licks are one trend. Maybe they're the stronger trend, but don't get it confused with this trend, which is quite similar. Concerns over kids buying baked beans as beaning trend goes viral. What does it mean to bean? You get a can and you bean it. Oh, uh, I thought they had some pictures. I this didn't see any pictures. Just on this in the one. video, you can kind of see. Let's see if we can mute this real quick. Uh, you can kind of see, you know, cars, porches. Basically, it's egging, but just with beans. Yeah, egging or, or toilet papering. I don't think this one is anything new. I think the theft one is a little more insidious. I don't know. What if you went home today, Krista, and your house was just covered in beans? I'd be impressed. I'd be like, how be did angry. you get beans on the roof? You'd be angry about that. Yeah, I probably would be oh, upset. It'd be easy. You just open the can and throw it. And just Like <laughs> Walter White when he throws the pizza on the roof. <laughs> So they're asking for shop owners to report groups of rowdy teens buying large amounts of beans. Oh, see something, say something. So if you're a bean pro, maybe you switch over to, uh, I don't know, like peas or something. Lentils. Throw them a curveball. Chickpeas. Hominy. And our final story has no explanation. What a beautiful headline, though. I almost started laughing when I saw it. It's just madness, and this is the world we live you in. I think we could parley with them to get somebody freed from one of the uh, the kidney camps in uh, Swap China. Out. Take yeah. a Uyghur in exchange for this yeah. guy? Yeah. I, honestly, I don't think this guy's worth a whole Uyghur. <laughs> He's worth like we get two. a tenth of a Uyghur. Yeah. We're going to have to get a bunch of these guys. <laughs> we get this guy and all the people who stole the identities of the condo collapse people oh yeah package deal we get one really high quality Uyghur for that Oklahoma man allegedly poops in grocery store freezer a woman discovered after reaching for pizza rolls <laughs> I like to imagine how like that guy looks so disgusted in that video didn't he and he should be although I think they're talking about something else they're talking about dead sins hey pay close attention I guess when you're looking in the freezer at your grocery store here's a here's a question did the, uh, the security system at this grocery store, were they using Game Boy Colors? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? That would be make a fine printout on the Game Boy Color. <laughs> Thanks to that one guy, the grocery store now has to spend 10, 20 grand upgrading their surveillance system <laughs> just in case this happens again. It looks like they purposely went in with a marker and colored his face in so he couldn't be recognized. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty much, I've, I've literally had this dream and woke up in a cold sweat. It's like, well, I guess I'm not going in public today. Touching someone's poop in a grocery store? Yeah, just waking up and it's like discovering some horror that someone has left somewhere. And it's just like... Is that part of the public bathroom? Yeah. Paranoia. So this guy went into the store. He spent some time filming women. Uh-oh. And following oh, As around. you start, yeah. When he was done with that, he went over to the freezer, hopped up on it, dropped the deuce, and then took the pizza rolls and stacked them on top of it so when this woman went in Ugh. she got the pizza rolls and a whole big handful of his and that was on the underside so she turned it over and she was like wait a minute is what? that yes it was it was that death sentence 
Maybe gloves weren't a bad idea at the grocery store. Maybe someone more deserving can benefit from his kidneys. (laughs) She mentioned that she she was like completely masking and gloving everywhere she went to grocery stores. Now she was completely paranoid. Oh. (laughs) Also, do you think that his choice of freezer was tactical? Why the pizza rolls? Well, see, what I'm thinking is like, if it got everywhere, that means it was probably warm. Like, well, of he had just warm. done it. No, 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 but like if it was in the freezer, if it had been there for a while, no, no, it could have frozen. It was one of those like, you know, down in freezers. He sat on top of it. Yeah, but I'm saying like, is it a closed door freezer? Or is yeah, it like probably a, Probably one of the open air ones. Oh, okay. oh, you mean by the time she got to yeah, it? Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm yeah. thinking. Like, it was still like smushy. Because she got, she didn't get all of it. She, she just got like, it was in her fingers and stuff. <laughs> probably in her fingernails. I mean... Listen, I pick up roost poops all the time, but I got plastic between me and the poops, and it's still gross. And also, I signed up for that when I got a dog. I can't imagine well, doing that at a grocery store, <laughs> barehanded. Unexpected? Yeah. It's, you're expecting cold, and you get a little bit of warm, and it's yeah. like, wait a minute, what, uh, what, what could that be? And that's the last thing that you think it is. <sighs> of all the things that it could be coming out of this freezer, it's not that, right? Ugh. Also, how about a little, uh, how about a little Hep C? Oh yeah. oh yeah, just a little spice for you. Just make it a little bit worse. Was mm. that what was going around for a while, or is it Hep A? It was Hep A, I think. Oh right, that's the clay-colored stools. Right? Yeah. What if you pull your hand back and it's clay-colored? Oh no! Oh. You've been exposed. One was so quiet right now because he's just like <laughs> just looking at that photo like he wants to go through the screen and kill that guy. It's like the gif of the dog. <laughs> 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 I will not eat the cupcake. I will not eat the cupcake. I will not eat the cupcake. I will never again eat pizza rolls. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's it. We'll see you guys next week.